Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Chrono Plays with VR. So before I begin, I just want to say that the audio might sound just a little bit off. Because I'm playing with VR and the head tracking thing, I figured having the microphone sitting right beside my face was probably not a good idea. So it's relocated by the camera this time, so everything might sound a little bit more, I don't know, open, echoey, that kind of thing. I'm not 100% sure yet. Kind of a new experience with me for me, so I'm kind of just playing it by ear, so to speak. So a couple of videos ago, I covered my stereoscopic display that I have set up for work, you know, with all the you know, red-green 3D glasses and the active shutter for the Sega Master System all the way up into the Oculus Rift, the DK2 anyways, I still don't have the CV1. Um, and you could tell that I was pretty solid when it came to the hardware. But as I admitted, the software I'm a little weak on, so I'm constantly looking for new and better display software. But let's cover the software that I do have initially. And the one piece of software that I have right now that I think is actually pretty good is a game called InCell. It's a game you can buy on Steam for about five bucks. Right now it's on sale for like 450, but five bucks US. It's a pretty good deal for what this is. I, I would say it's worth it uh, for the VR experience. If it's just if you're not playing with VR, don't don't bother. But for the VR experience, I'd say it's a pretty good deal. Um, it uses the Oculus Rift runtime 0.8, so it is up to date. It's not 1.0 yet, but not many developers, from what I understand, have 1.0. So it's up to date with 0.8, so that's a positive. That's something I'm very much focusing on, stuff that works with 0.8, stuff that has been kept up to date with development. So let's stop rambling and get on to actually playing the game. Year 2134. The new era of modern healthcare is upon us. And so I was created, the most excellent assistant robot 07. But you may refer to me simply as, your highness. My purpose is to aid human such, as yourself in infiltrating a human cell. Today we are performing the first miniaturization test in order to cure our volunteer. Her name is Jane Smith and she is experiencing a mild invasion of the influenza virus. And don't worry about surviving the miniaturization. We have completed all the tests on six excellent assistant robots. We are scanning her cells in search of the ones attacked by the virus. For the first time a simple human and a genius robot are working together. Aren't you filled with joy? I know I am. The virus will move into the cell nucleus. Our goal is to outrun the virus and bring the vaccine into the nucleus. There it goes. Okay, so that was a slightly long intro that uh, I wasn't 100% sure where it would end, actually. All right, so this is the intro part of Incel, and it's a little bit interesting. As you can see, it's quite smooth, honestly. I had to use uh, Shadow Play. I couldn't use uh, Fraps. Fraps kept slowing everything down to 60 FPS, and 60 F FPS is terrible terrible when it comes to VR. But uh, let's get started and take a look detected. at it. Buckle up, human. We are going in. And there we have it, the slightly creepy world of Incel. All right, and it does look significantly better than it did before, because everything was two-dimensional before. No, I don't want to start the game yet. Basically, uh, this is a racing game. Uh, I don't know what to call it. It's one of them hexagonal racing games. Basically, you run on the outside of a... Well, I call it a hexagon because that was the first game that I ever saw like this. Uh, yeah, just go through the tutorial and you'll Welcome see. Welcome inside the cell, human. Our patient is suffering from the influenza virus. Yes, yes, yes. To protect just this cell from virus, start we should this reach game. the cell nucleus and bring... All right, so... We are moving to the mitochondrion organelle. 
I click tutorial, of course. Protein, increase mm. movement yes, speed yes, yes. via speed pads and avoid obstacles. All right, let's go. The navigation system is installed onto your helmet. Oh yeah, that's a little creative. Tilt your head to the side to order you to strafe right and left. Tilt your head and you can turn. You better be I'm prepared. using the Steam controller because it's just easier for me. All right, so as you can see right now, I'm not pushing any buttons. It's only controlled by left and right. And the only forward momentum is what's default. And you speed up when you do this. When you uh, hit one of those green things. Whee! All right, but as you can see, it's just running on the outside of this bent cylinder. And that's really all it is. And you just got to do it quickly. So don't run into the red things. Run into the green and white things. And it's really that simple. Honestly, if it wasn't for the VR aspect of this game, I wouldn't have wasted my money. Power speed is unmatched. Because it's a fairly generic kind of game. I mean, we've got a wannabe GLaDOS computer that doesn't really quite go the whole way there. Like, she has a few comments that make her seem like she's definitely a wannabe GLaDOS but she doesn't really go all the way, so to speak. I don't know how to describe that. Um, but the real big advantage to this game, like I said, is because it's VR and because it's so easy to look around at what you're doing, woo, uh, it's actually easier to play this game. You kind of have to with all the bends and twists in Good the job. road, so to speak. Uh, you have to look around. The vaccine into it. And it breaks. We've gathered enough protein to improve our abilities. Yes, yes, Mitochondrial yes. Mitochondrial organelles can improve our speed in exchange for some protein. I have a problem talking over people. Uh, it breaks you the habit of what I've been calling uh, lock neck. And that's basically when you're playing a regular first person shooter or playing on a monitor, well, any game really, when you're playing it on a monitor, your neck is locked, your head is facing straight forward, and that's it. That is bad with VR. You never, never, never want a game that forces your head to stay straight forward. So basically any first person shooter that doesn't separate movement and looking, you know, terrible, terrible thing. Um, we'll, we'll buy this, we'll go through reach. here. Let us free this cell once and for all. This game broke me of that habit. Warning. The because you can look around and you can see us. what's coming ahead of you. With us, all will be lost. So you can see the, the road the there. And the virus wave is displayed on your helmet. Additionally, which I here, love. You can see the current position of you us know, in how the you virus. can look around. And that's the cell wall. Oh, trippy. I never saw that before. There are three virus rings which are um, in front of the main wave. I wonder if they move at some of this is like biologically accurate. That would be cool. But another thing that this game does right is this right here. This is like your helmet down here. I think. I think that's supposed to be your helmet. I've been pretending it's a pod. Because um, when I tilt my head, the the Outstanding interface doesn't change. Woo! Uh, and you're supposed to tilt your helmet to turn. So I can do this and turn, but the uh, blue ball down at the bottom doesn't change um so yeah i've been thinking of that as like a pod and you know i'm wearing the helmet i just don't see my helmet but it's a stationary thing that even if you're not looking at it even if you're not noticing it it's there in your vision so i think that actually helps with motion sickness something stable something that the virus wave stays is right behind us. relatively an stationary between us and the virus. even when we you move your head. It reaches zero. Unlike that study that they did a little while ago where they think a fake nose might help with motion sickness. Um, I don't think... I personally and don't think that would it. help. I think a stationary thing like that will. So that's why car games work so well in the Oculus. Wee. And why it might not actually be a problem with the rift, since the rift is pretty much focusing on room scale. So it's not going to have, well, it's not going to focus on games like this, where everything's moving around you, you're not moving. 
Wee. But yes, so there are some great advantages to this game. Like I said, it breaks lock neck, so you have to look around, you have to look up, down, left, right to see where you're going. Take that, you virus. And uh, I like that. Uh, it's got the stationary little, I don't know, apparently helmet there. It's got Outstanding controls work. that are based the on the headset, is which is cool. Any virus activity. It's got a wannabe GLaDOS, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's okay. I mean, it, it, GLaDOS has been done. Just don't try, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Unless you can think it, you can do it as well mm -hmm. as Valve, and that's going to be hard. Defeated. Just don't bother. We've experienced GLaDOS. Show mark the beginning and, of the microsurgery yeah. era in modern healthcare. Unfortunately, and then the cell these are our cut scenes. Long after the human so left it. nice and simple. Too many organelles were destroyed okay. during the invasion. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's so I am covers it. All um, until a more yes, yes, yes. Test is carried on. It's complaining that it can't count as a victory unless I beat later levels. So Year let's start. Goes back to the title screen. Blah 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 blah. We go we into the cell. <sighs> and uh, let's take a look at a little bit of a later level. Welcome again, now. Women. This is from the virus reach the level one. No, the I don't want to select anything. You. Uh, you see the green paths there. No, I don't want to select anything. Uh, you can choose your path. It's not just you beat the first level, then you go into the mitochondrial, right? Nuclei, nucleus, whatever they were calling it, and beat the level. There's actually paths you have to take, and there's more uh, stops along the way. I'm trying not to select anything. There's more stops along the way the harder it gets, and of course the harder it gets, the harder it is to beat the virus. Can I go back somehow? Hang on. Boop. Oh, there we go. Um, let's just restart. And let's go to one of the harder ones. Let's go to level... Oh, I bet you have to unlock level 3. Let's try to go to level 3. Year I obviously detected. only have the tutorial Buckle unlocked right now. We are going in. I mostly play this game on my laptop, not my desktop. No, I cannot beat level... I cannot go to level 3 or level 2 without beating level 1. Alright. The biggest gripe I have with this game right now is you, there is no real control over your forward momentum. So when you're actually in the race, you can't you can't put forth effort to speeding up. The only thing you can do, and will this thing not be black at any point in time? Come on, load. Uh, the only thing you can do is catch the green things. How you turn, how you move, I think it broke. Uh, doesn't affect anything that I can tell in the game. All right, well. We're not really missing anything there anyways. Because it's pretty much a repeat. Level 1 is pretty much a repeat of the tutorial. Level 2 is a repeat of level 1. Getting progressively shorter amounts of times to do things. So you can't... It is physically possible to lose the game. And, of course, that becomes easier and easier as you progress. I mean, that's a game. That's a video game in general. But... And it totally did break. Huh. What the hell? All right. Anyways. Um, what was I saying? But, yeah, it doesn't feel like you're really in control of the game. Like, playing, say, Skyrim. If you lose, it's because you didn't do a thing right. You didn't hit the enemy fast enough or hard enough or you didn't level up enough before you went and attacked that enemy or you didn't use a magic spell so many different options where you control your own fate in this game it's pretty much you run down the cylinder and that's it you you don't do anything else and it's kind of i don't know boring i guess kind of ish i don't really know how else to describe it um if if it wasn't for the VR aspect of the game, this would be a pretty mediocre game. Um, in all honesty, I would give the game itself to be 
completely fair. I'm not talking how, like, IGN or whatever gives a game a 7.5 out of 10 and it's garbage. No, I'm actually going to be using the entire spectrum. So 1 through 10, I would have to give the gameplay itself a 2 because it's pretty bland and boring. It's the same thing over and over and over again. There's no real mixing it up. I mean, there's slight mechanic change later on in the game. Uh, level 2, they introduce these white balls that you have to hit, which take out the red things. But that's really it. It doesn't really add anything substantial to the game. And it's a little disappointing. But while the game alone is a 2, and for the record, it can be played without VR, um, the VR aspect, I would give the VR a good solid eight. It is very good VR experience. Now, as for the comfort level, I would probably give that, let's see, if 10 is, you know, you're sitting there and you don't feel anything, there's no potential for motion sickness whatsoever, uh, and I'm incredibly susceptible to motion sickness, so I'm a very good judge of this. Uh, so if 10 is you're feeling absolutely nothing, and let's say one is you're feeling pretty nauseous and zero would be grab a bucket quick. Um, I would have to say this is somewhere around uh, seven. Yeah, I would say somewhere between a six and an eight. So seven sounds good to me. Basically, I'll look at in just the right direction at just the right time and I'll get a little bit of a lurch in my stomach. But I don't get sick, okay? And it's not a permanent thing. I don't feel it anymore. There are plenty of VR stuff that I'll play with for like 5-10 minutes and then I'll feel it in my stomach for like an hour. This I don't. So it's done very well. The, v the, the experience is done very well. You got to do high frame rates. You got to do low latency. So when I turn my head, it actually turns. Um, it's actually done fairly well. What they did in VR is really really good i just have to say that right out they just did it in a game that's not all that spectacular which might be part of the reason why they did so good in the game or in the vr is that the game it just the game itself plays well with vr i i don't really know i've been studying this basically and i understand that a few games are not going to work well with vr like at all like, first-person shooter games, unless you're doing full room scale, and believe me, room scale is going to be a problem when you try to do an open-world FPS, like, I don't know, not even F open world, like Half-Life 2. Being able to do a corridor shooter is going to be damn near impossible with room scale, because how do you run down the corridor? Seriously. But uh, some games just aren't going to work well with VR, just in general. This game works well with VR. So if you have an Oculus Rift or potentially a Vive, I don't have one, so I can't test. If you have an Oculus Rift, I say pick up the game. It's actually pretty good. If you don't have a Rift, well, if you really like those kind of games, I'd say rock on. But it doesn't really have anything impressive going for it. There's no real high score system going. There are times, but... I mean, all you saw on the main menu was three stars. So there really isn't a high, uh, you know, the lowest time or anything like that. There's no leaderboards or anything like that. So it's not really a comp competition type game. It's hard to explain this stuff. But there's not really much drawing you back in. Once you finish the tutorial, level one, level two, level three, that's it. There's really nothing bringing you back to the game. But I, I'm i going to try it out as one of my potentials for an introduction into VR. So when I put on my stereoscopics display, this is going to be on my list of games that I give as options to people who want to try out the Oculus Rift. And I have several other games, but those will have to go for another episode. I'll see you in the next one, and as always, keep playing the game, and this thing is still frozen!